Hey hey everyone and welcome to a new little video, this time about tiny hands. Again. Um, well, you might know that um, last winter we had a big shoot on an entire scene and a professional animator, Albert Radl, did a lot of animations for my movie. Um, yeah, it was four minutes in total, that, which is quite a lot frame by frame. And most of the shots involved uh, this puppet here, our human main character. And there was also a lot of interactions with props and furniture and the set um, involving his hands. And you can imagine that's quite stressful on the thin silicone and everything. And we also didn't plan out everything perfectly. So Albert had to do a lot of improvisation with rigging and stuff. And so after four minutes of animation, this is how the hands turned out. Um, yeah, it, it's, it looks really nasty <laughs> and let me tell you a bit about what happened here. Um, on some of them you can see this white, whitish crust residue stuff and that's basically some super glue because some of the props were glued down to the hand palms and it made a surprising good connection, but of course it also ruined the skin. Um, on other pairs you can see some, some cracks forming in the silicones, either at the wrist or at some of the fingers. And that's just due to the um, bending back and forth and yeah, it puts a lot of uh, pressure to the silicone. So that's that. And some of the really nasty ones you can see they have kind of a hole right through the palm. And those were the pairs where something either had to be screwed down or the hand itself had to be screwed to a wall, like in this shot, for example, to prevent it from moving around. Actually, most of these issues could have been preventable <laughs> if I had planned out everything better. Yeah, in the end, Albert had to improvise a lot and you just have to get the shot done. So yeah, um, sacrificing some hands sometimes is necessary. But still, uh, what could we have done better? First of all, for the props, um, most of the palms have a tiny thread inside. So it would have been a good idea to incorporate some tiny um, threaded rods or nuts into the um, props. So we could have used some screws. And the same for the occasions where we had to screw the hands to the wall or things like this. Um, yeah, would have been better to have a thread inside and come with a, f with a screw. So we only had to punch the, would have to punch the inside of the palm. But yeah, the, as the set was constructed, this wasn't possible. And so we had to go from the top of the wrist into the wall and yeah, things got nasty. Um, so yeah. Let's have some fun ripping off his skin. <laughs>
After some minor adjustments of the screws and clean up of the armatures, they were ready to be molded again. So this time Ulrich decided he wants to cover the armature with a thin layer of silicone first um, to prevent the armature from touching the walls of the mold directly. Because in the past we had some issues with visible armature pieces uh, piercing through the outer skin and things like this and it's very hard to center the armature fingers exactly in the mold. So yeah, covering the entire armature with a skin layer of silicone first uh, really helped with that issue. So Ulrich molded three fresh pairs of hands um, and an additional one without arm attachments we can use for close-ups. And yeah, sadly at the last pair of hands he molded the mold broke into pieces. So yeah, this will be the last batch of hands for this character we can use, sadly. Um, but I think it will be enough because there are not that many scenes left. The first pair has the stainless steel armature I'm also selling in my shop. And this moves really, really smoothly in all directions and you can really see how easy it is to bend individual finger parts and yeah, it's, it's just really, really nice to work with them. So this is going to be our main pair of hands. And the next one again has one of the old hand armature prototypes. They are still nice, but um, yeah, some of the joints are a bit loose, some of them are a bit stiff, and yeah, it's just a bit of an uneven movement, and yeah, they are bad prototypes, but we can still use them. And the last pair, again, is one with simple wire fingers. And when bending those, you can really see um, the difference towards the one with the armature fingers inside because it's really hard to bend the finger at a specific point. The wire just wants to bend at the palm basically and it's really hard to bend the fingertips and also the fingers can end up in quite a crooked positions and it's really hard to straighten them again. So I think for, for close-ups especially the armature fingers are really neat to work with and yeah, show really nice poses. So yeah, these three pairs will be the ones we are using for all the future scenes of the human main puppet. I hope that will be enough. Um, we will try to be a bit more gentle with them now, um, but I'm quite confident it will be enough because there are not that many scenes remaining. So yeah, um, let's fit them to the puppet. Um, for the arm connection, I usually use uh, just a piece of round stock with a flat ground onto one side and a little screw pressing on that flat. For me, that's just the easiest connection to manufacture and I prefer that over the square tubing things which are usually used. Same principle for the back of his neck. So 
So yeah, here we have our proud human with his new hand and I think he's nearly ready for shooting again. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the restoring process of the hands. Um, I thought it might be interesting to also see yeah, how things get damaged and worn off through the animation process and yeah, just a quick one this time. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye!